Now, uh, some updates from the collapsed building in Kapsabit. So far, no fatalities have been reported, even as rescue operations are called off at the site where the three-story building collapsed yesterday. Authorities say a total of 41 people were rescued from the site, two of whom remained admitted in hospital. <laughs> Reporter Elvis Kuske will be joining us later on in the bulletin to give us uh, the, fresh, uh, the latest updates uh, from that uh, particular tragedy that occurred yesterday after that building, Fostery building, um, went down. Uh, we understand uh, that a number of people are still in hospital recuperating after that particular incident. But to our top story at this hour, Attorney General Geith Mugai has said there will be no constitutional crisis even if the election is not held within 60 days. He maintains that. President Kenyatta will remain in charge until a new resident or president is elected. Uh, the Attorney General was addressing a media conference earlier in the day, but uh, these particular sentiments are quite uh, the opposite of what we saw uh, senior counsel James Orengo uh, say that uh, there will indeed be a constitutional crisis in the event that elections are not held within the 60 days after the ruling was made by the Supreme Court. But to understand or to put this into context and to get a better understanding of what really will, ha will happen in the event we don't have elections, um, joining me in studio now is Felix Odiambo. He is an elections es expert, so to speak, from the electoral law and Governance Institute Africa. Felix, uh, always a pleasure to have you here on yes. KTN News Desk. We are getting uh, very different um, ideas from the opposition, NASA, through James Orengo, and from what the Attorney General said this morning. But what really is the reality? Well, I think opinion is uh, divided over this issue. Mm -hmm. And uh, no doubt the Attorney General uh, is one of the uh, brightest legal minds in this country. But it should be remembered that their jurisdiction to interpret the Constitution does not rest with the Attorney General. It, the Constitution vests that responsibility to the judiciary and more specifically uh, to the High Court. Uh, depending on which side of the political divide, uh, even the lawyers in this country are split over this issue mm -hmm. on what happens uh, at the expiry of uh, 60, the 60 days. days. Uh, to an extent that, I would really have wished that uh, a court of competent jurisdiction, in this case the High Court, were to pronounce itself uh, on this matter uh, to provide a clear way forward of the same. Mm -hmm. But the way I look at the Constitution, specifically as it relates to the elections of the president, there are two roadmaps here. Uh, the first one is the uh, election as contemplated in Article 136, and that is the election after every five, uh, five years, and, or the fifth year, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And then the election within uh, uh, Article 138 all the way up to 140. And this is how it should go. If there is no president elected, uh, or if a president has been elected and there is a petition, uh, or if there is no petition in the first instance, then the president will be sworn in. However, if there is a petition and the elections of the president is nullified, as is the case here, the constitution, constitution provides for temporary incumbency mm -hmm. under Article 134. And in this period, the Constitution also provides that a fresh election, such as what the, uh, the Supreme Court ruled, will happen within... Uh, 60 days. Uh, in our case, the 60 days will expire on the 31st of, uh, 31st of October. Mm -hmm. Now, Article 142 that the Attorney General is relying on, and which provides for that a president, the president will act until the next president is sworn in, is actually uh, 
inferred from a direct election of the president and the expiry of the 60 mm -hmm. days. But however, if there is a problem that there is no election within the 60 days yeah. and that the president is, and it, it also includes uh, vacancy as arising from incapacity and impeachment and resignation, then Article 142 does not kick in. It's actually Article 146, mm -hmm. in which case, in my opinion, the Speaker of the National Assembly will exercise the, office, the powers of the office of the president. And, uh, and uh, an election is expected to be held within 60 days mm -hmm. again. Now, if at the end of 60 days, where this, when the Speaker is acting, there is no election, then a constitutional crisis will kick in. After the 60 days? After the 60 days mm -hmm. uh, post uh, in which, when the Speaker of the National Assembly mm -hmm. is acting. What is this talk about a caretaker government, a transitional government? The Attorney General has said there's nothing like that. Well, I, would, they, would, we, would we get into a point when we would need that? There is no specific reference for a constitution, I mean, a transitional government mm -hmm. or a caretaker government. But the constitution in Article 146 provides that the Speaker of the National Assembly will discharge the functions of the office of the President mm -hmm. for a period of 60 days pending an election. Now, if you want to call this a caretaker government, you may, but the, there is a provision for the Speaker mm -hmm. to act. Mm -hmm. In the event the President or the Deputy President cannot act or discharge the functions of okay. the office of the President. Let's talk about the election that uh, is facing the country 33 yes. days from now. Um, the IBC has changed the dates. We know that uh, Safran had also had a request that they wouldn't have time to reconfigure everything by the 17th. And uh, we know that NASA still insists that some people need to be out of office and some reforms need to be made in the electoral um, body for them to participate in the election. Uh, Felix, what are some of the things that our ABC needs to do to right some of the wrongs they made that led to the annulment of the election within the time frame of this 33 days? Well, uh, first of all, uh, let's appreciate the fact that the election to be held in October, I mean, uh, uh, with this uh, period, 60 days, which the, the IBC has fixed for 26th, is probably the easy, it's a, like a referendum. It's the easiest election to organize because, in one, it will be an election, a presidential election, involving only two candidates. Uh, at least that is the interpretation yes. the IBC has given which of course I didn't agree with, but that's a different matter. Now that election is not difficult to organize. The Supreme Court found the IBC to have committed an illegalities and irregularities. Mm -hmm. Now it would, be, uh, it would be completely naive to expect that the IBC as presently constituted mm -hmm. without any reforms whatsoever would preside over that election. Uh, I think there is need for reforms in terms of personnel. The IBC needs to recruit new returning officers and presiding officers because remember there are a number of uh, incidences that were, uh, were cited in the Supreme mm -hmm. Court where the returning officers and the presiding officers completely boggled the elections. There are fundamental problems with ICT as it relates to the results transmission. Now that's an indictment to the ICT directorate department of the, of the IEBC. Now, and, the, and then of course there would be the procurement of the ballot papers, the reconfiguration of the technology and things like that. Mm -hmm. But once we can get this, then this election, uh, to organizing this should not be difficult. Mm -hmm. Yes. But some um, would argue that the Supreme Court said it didn't find anyone culpable, so it means there was no one can really be accused of wrongdoing in this particular election. Absolutely. But though on the other hand, yeah. we are seeing that they were told that they committed irregularities and mm. uh, illegalities. So where does this leave the IBC? I've, I've seen a lot of misinterpretation of that. Yeah. Look, the IBC is organized like this. We have the commissioners, mm. and then we have the secretariat. The head of the secretariat is the CEO. Mm -hmm. And the, below the secretariat are directorates or departments. Now, when the, uh, the, uh, the Supreme Court pronounced itself on illegalities and irregularities, the Supreme Court didn't, did not need to specifically mention people. But you can infer from that judgment where the back stops. I mean, mm -hmm. the back stops with the CEO as the overall head of the secretariat and the overall in charge of the operational aspects of the elections. The Supreme Court singled out the director, I mean, uh, results transmission system, which is under the docket of the ICT department. Mm -hmm. There were problems with f fake polling stations. There were problems with the conduct of the returning officers. Now, this is properly within the department mm -hmm. of elections and operations. Mm -hmm. And so, in a smart, and then there are two things that also need to be appreciated. When the court finds illegalities, 
illegalities are usually of criminal nature. It is properly within, properly within, uh, within the docket of the DPP to then take investigation from there. Irregularities, on the other hand, are violations of operational nature. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this is what the Supreme Court said. Mm -hmm. Yes. So there's also been a, the argument of time that uh, some of the demands that are there for IEBC to clean its house, um, say probably uh, use another a company for printing the ballot papers. We know that NASA is against Algeria. Do you think there's enough time, 33 days is enough time to make all these reforms we're talking about? Well, I think what would have to happen is that the country would have to engage in honest discussion. Mm -hmm. The IBC should convene that meeting. Uh, NASA has made demands which I think, in my opinion, arising from the Supreme Court ruling are very legitimate. Uh, Jubilee has also made demands. There would have to be a process of give and take. Uh, there would have to be concessions that both sides would have to make, but remember the Supreme Court said that if there would be violation of constitutional and legal nature mm -hmm. and irregularities, they will not hesitate from coming, uh, arriving or reaching the same conclusion or the same funding. Mm -hmm. There needs to be a meeting convened by the IBC. There are a number of things, there are things that must be done for sure. The identification system must work. I disagree with the Attorney General and, uh, uh, and I had uh, the dissenting opinion of mm -hmm. uh, uh, Justice Jokindungu that there is a mongrel. There is no mongrel. The, uh, the, the, the election technology application with regard to vote, uh, I mean voter registration, mm -hmm. voter identification, uh, candidates management and results transmission is electronic and not manual. The constitution, I mean the laws are clear. Uh, the Attorney General is wrong by uh, suggesting that it is manual backed mm -hmm. up by technology. Mm -hmm. in, in fact, it's the other way around. This crucial aspects of the elections is electronic backed by manual. And so Kim's must work. Uh, we need to make a determination on printing of the ballot papers. There are problems with Algoria from procurement to the number of ballot papers that, ha that happen. These are, these are not illegitimate demands, but there has to be an understanding that what can we give? If mm -hmm. Algoria prints the ballot, what are the security safeguards that we need to put in place? Mm -hmm. And most fundamentally, there has to be a complete, either an, a recruitment of new returning officers yeah. and a total reshuffle of all the presiding officers. Mm -hmm. So for the political class, there should, should be a give and take for that? There should be a give and take. You, have, have, observed, you have observed a number of elections in a number of countries where things have gone wrong and where things have gone right. Um, what recommendations would we make for us as we head into this next election in the next 33 days? Uh, the point is IBC uh, committed to ma tremendous errors of uh, legal and uh, a number of irregularities mm -hmm. or operational nature. It is true that we cannot go for another election without uh, fixing these problems. Mm -hmm. And I've often said that the true test of an electoral commission is the legitimacy and the support that it attracts from a wide range of stakeholders. Mm -hmm. Now, the conduct of IBC does not inspire, or during this electioneering period never inspired confidence. And I've often said in this, for, uh, in this show that when the electoral commission of Ghana takes a position, it is supported by everybody because they know that the Electoral Commission of Ghana can look at the ruling party and the main opposition party and tell them no. Now this, uh, this commission, I mean, allegations of partisanship, mm -hmm. incompetence and many other things. Mm -hmm. So uh, IBC should learn from its, uh, the Ghanaian Electoral Commission and the back stops with IBC. Okay. They, they have no choice but to give us a credible process. Felix, always a pleasure to have you here on KTN News Desk. Felix Odiambo is uh, from the Electoral Law and Governance Institute Africa as we take a look at